Hey, what's up guys? It's Honcho here, and because my video is out slightly later than usual, you know what that means, right? Yep, it is patch note day, my dudes. <coughs> OWI is dropping squad version 7.2 tomorrow, and as you can see by the length of this video, it's a big one. We've got new vehicles, new features, new battalions, quality of life improvements, infantry combat overhaul adjustments, UI improvements, a new pack of weapon skins, and a list of bug fixes that are longer than the list of notes written down by your therapist. But as always, before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more squad guides, gameplay, and updates. 83% of you guys aren't subscribed, so hit that button now and do a brother a favor. Right, now that's out of the way, let's dive into this. The two new vehicles we are getting in squad are the M1128 Striker MGS and the Quad Bikes. Now, for those of you who aren't as clued up on your military vehicles, the M1128 Striker is basically the infamous Striker M1126 chassis, only with a 105mm M68A2 rifled cannon, which is very similar to the original M1 and M1IP Abrams gun. Only thing is, this has an autoloader and it sounds fantastic. True to the characteristics of the M1126 Striker, the M1128 is very mobile and can really motor on at high speeds. The only real difference is the acceleration is a bit more sluggish, as it is a few tons heavier than the 1126. But let's be honest, if all you want to do is just go fast and be able to go anywhere, then you'll want this, the quad bike. This all-terrain vehicle, which is only available for the US Army and US Marine Corps, can hold two infantrymen and finally gives you the option to be as much of a pain in the ass as the insurgent motorbikes. Whilst these offer no protection, these go-anywhere-do-anything vehicles certainly beat walking from objective to objective, and arguably will be the fastest way to get from point to point. Just hope you don't bump into any enemy armour on the way, unless you don't mind being turned into cannon fodder by being a face-first reconnaissance squad. It'd be cool if we could get a logistics version of this in the future, as you could get some seriously sneaky radios down with these. So, if you enjoy playing with the US Army and US Marines, you can cruise around in style with their new toys. Moving on, if any of you caught my 7.2 preview video a few weeks back, I demonstrated the new map voting feature, which is coming to squad. At the end of a round of squad, you, the player, now have the ability to choose which map and game mode you wish to play, and choose which faction you wish to play with it on. So rather than a server being on a fixed rotation, which means you usually see the same maps at the same time, now you can pretty much end up with anything at the end of a game. But if server owners have not configured this properly, there is also the chance of doing the same map twice or end up doing a popular map. But because people aren't actually looking any further than their nose, you could be stuck on that map with a game mode only a few people understand, such as territory control or insurgency. And this is something that I did see during the playtests. Now, as a player, you will see on the map selection screen this nice little information icon. If you click on that, it shows you all of the possible capture points and the potential lanes in which the map will go as you play it out, and shows you the game mode. You can also click on these arrows to flick between each map without having to come in and out of the menu. You can also do the same for your faction to vote on, and you get to see all of the equipment and assets that they get to use. This is why I have spent the last five days experimenting and testing to find the perfect balance by limiting how many of these spicy layers can be voted on and how often maps can come up to give you guys the best experience on my server, Dead on Dismount. We have a bunch of config files that we can adjust that restrict how much is voted on, how often a map or game mode shows up, and the same with factions as well. This is great because you will now find that servers will start to get their own identity through the layers and maps that they can be playing on. Oh, and if you own a server and you don't want map voting, you can still run fixed rotations. This is honestly a great feature that's coming to squad, and I'm certainly looking forward to seeing the matchups that it brings. And to accompany this, there has been a few changes made. Firstly, Squad has reduced the number of map players from close to 500 to 204. This one thing here will help to reduce the total size of Squad on your PC. But to also go with this, factions have been split up into alliances and maps now have allocated biomes which restricts where each alliance can operate in. 
For example, all of the blue four nations can be found on every single map. Whereas Pan-Asia, they can play everywhere but Europe. Your independent nations are affected most by this. For example, Middle Eastern Alliance can only operate within Afghan and the Middle East, but Militia can only operate within Europe. Now, whilst you cannot have blue versus blue or red versus red, for example, the independent nations can fight each other. So you can have Turkey versus MEA at Kohat, for example. There's over 68 different faction matchups that are possible with this. But this is where it gets a bit deeper. All factions now have a different battalion to choose from. These range from combined arms to mechanized and armored and a whole bunch more. And this is some of the information that you can see from the voting screen. Now, as much as I'd love to go into great detail on all of this, I have covered it extensively in my 7.2 preview video, which I will link on screen now and towards the end of the video. And that's only because the list of bug fixes and everything else I've got to go through here is so long, you would all still be sat here tomorrow watching this as we go through them all. But honestly, the faction battalions are going to make for some amazing matchups, especially with the asymmetrical balancing, which really makes you and your team think about how to use your team's assets to your advantage. Now, before we get into the bug fixes, there's a bunch of system and gameplay changes to go through here. First up, Whilst holding left shift to steady your aim, it now also reduces your sensitivity. Now this threw me off initially, as I didn't know about this, but there is a slider bar that you can adjust to scale it up and down, or disable it altogether if you do not like this feature. The scope bobbing from weapon sway has also been reduced. This makes it easier to keep the target in view through the scope, and can help prevent motion sickness in some players. This change is visual only and does not reduce weapon sway, and it is still possible to trigger the scope shadow effect. Scopes should now be more enjoyable to use with no effect on game balance. The clear sight's iron sight perspective offset now only occurs when higher sway levels have been reached, which will typically be after sprinting or using up your stamina. This is intended to make the perspective shift feel more intentional and predictable whilst keeping the Iron Sight ADS view usable when the sway is high. Stop and take a knee to make the sights return to normal much quicker. However, further iterations to Iron Sight weapons are coming in the future. Again, I covered these features in much greater detail in my 7.2 video. Right, they have also added support for manual bolting. Whilst using bolt action rifles, firing will no longer automatically cycle the bolt. Players must press the fire button again to manually cycle a bolt and load a new round into the chamber. This allows you to defer cycling the bolt until after seeing where your last shot impacts, especially whilst using scopes. And to accompany this, the recoil has been adjusted on the SV-98 the Mosin and the C-14 rifle to ensure players can see the point of impact on their round at the highest magnification setting to support the manual bolting feature. On top of this, OWI has also completely reworked the sway for the G3, FAL, SKS, Mosin, the Minimi and RPD. And to accompany that, the hipfire recoil on the SKS has been reduced. They've improved the view through the M4 and M16 carry handle iron sights for easier spotting, and tank sabo rounds now correctly apply suppression as they pass by players. They have increased the level of suppression that is applied at the area of impact as well. Now here's a fun one. Helicopters, Samirs, and boats with mounted machine guns have had their traverse range increased and they have also adjusted the armor of the BTR-80 and BTR-82 chassis to no longer take damage from fragmentation rounds, and they have adjusted the rear armor to no longer be vulnerable to high explosive rounds. Now, if a player is having audio input issues, they now see an alert icon whilst attempting to use the VoIP system, and a big one here, server owners and admins can now rename squads. You know, there's a bunch I haven't been able to cover here because the list is so extensive, but rest assured, link to the patch notes will be in the description down below. So now moving on to bug fixes, and there's been a huge effort to fix some of the squad's older legacy bugs, as well as some of the more fresh ones. So let's go through some of the ones I think are pretty big. First up, 
they've reduced and smoothed out apparent movement stutters and hitches on helicopter movement whilst flying close to busy areas. They have fixed an issue where explosion sound effects, visual effects and damage could be desynced from one another or playing out of order, for example with timed explosives. They fixed an issue where vehicles with turrets could take double damage from projectiles that penetrate both the hull and turret component. And they have slowed down the ADS speed of the scoped G3 and increased the ADS speed of the reflex sight G3. Now they've also changed it so mines that are placed down by a combat engineer will now despawn when they change team. On top of this, they've also fixed an issue with the vehicle passenger list where players who weren't in the vehicle were still listed as passengers. Now this is a pretty big one I feel. They've fixed an issue where the preview soldier weapon does not update when changing between weapon kits with multiple weapon choices. Now this one always used to annoy the hell out of me, but I'm glad to see it's been fixed. They fixed an issue where a bandage would get used when a player is incapacitated during bandaging. They fixed an issue where pressing the escape button would not close the main menu after navigating to the customization menu during a round of gameplay. And they've improved the operation of the deployment menu, further mitigating the risk of having the infinite running man animation bug. They fixed an issue with the Turkish Land Force uniform not getting muddy or dusty whilst crawling. And they have fixed an issue with the Challenger 2 where the armor collision mesh was misaligned. Another one that used to really annoy the hell out of me, they have fixed an issue with the commander's UAV camera where ground stabilization and lock-on were broken. This is basically when you used to press, I think it's Z to stabilize the drone and it used to just start spinning. And this is a massive one. Fixed an issue where RPGs are sometimes not loaded following the reload animation. Weapon animations no longer keep reloading when players have become incapacitated or killed. That's a shame, I used to find that quite funny. And they've fixed an issue with the Turkish Land Forces UH-1H helicopter rotor rigging and navball. And fixed an issue where making small aim adjustments in some vehicle turrets and emplacements while aiming straight forwards, your aim could occasionally stutter, lock or start slightly drifting. I'm glad to know this is an issue because I thought that either my mouse was ghosting or I was literally losing my mind. They fixed multiple configuration issues with the TLF MPT-76 rifles, which made them inconsistent with other battle rifle archetype weapons. This makes a lot of sense actually, because I always felt when they made adjustments to the battle rifle class, I always felt the MPT-76 got worse. They've fixed an exploit with helicopters where binding multiple inputs to an action could enable the helicopter to rotate faster. And they have reworked the binoculars way to be more forgiving. Whoa, I think that's enough to read through here. There's still loads more in the list that I haven't even touched and there's plenty more to come. In bug fixes alone, there's well over a hundred in this patch, and that doesn't count all the gameplay and system updates and the mod SDK fixes and updates. Now, there has been a few tweaks to skins as well. On top of a new jungle skin pack for the PLA, which can be used on all woodland layers, we now have access to worn variants of skins that we already own if we want to have a bit of wear and tear on our weapons. And to round it all off, Offworld have stated that spawn timers on HABs and rally points can become desynced. Investigation has identified the issue, but we need more time to plan a solution. And they've also said the same for anti-aliasing interfering with the picture-in-picture scopes, resulting in having to choose the prioritize scope clarity option without AA in the scopes, or prioritize AA in scopes option, which can result in blurry picture-in-picture -picture scopes. Again, investigation has identified the issue but they need more time to execute a permanent solution. 7.2 is going to be a mammoth update for squad and it will certainly feel a lot different to how it is now. OWI still have further infantry combat overhaul adjustments planned and I would thoroughly expect to see changes and adjustments to the lineups that the battalions get for balancing purposes going forwards. As always, links to all my socials are in the description down below, and oh, whilst I have your attention, if you're an enjoyer of metal music, my band Diversio released our debut EP last week and is available on Spotify and all of the other usual streaming platforms. But if you live in or near to Newcastle, 
we will be playing at Trillion's Rock Bar on Wednesday the 13th of March. Subsequently, Patch Note Day. Feel free to pop over and say hi, and subsequently, I will keep you all informed of any other gigs I will be doing within the UK throughout the year. Anyway, that's all from me. What are you most excited about with this update? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more Squad Guides gameplay and updates. Thank you all for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you on my next video, my server, or hopefully a venue near you. Good night.